want to transition to the the NFL. And obviously, we're about a month away from the start of the NFL season, I believe. So the closer we get, the more football is going to be discussed. But I saw this this news a couple days ago. I didn't get a chance to actually talk about this yet with Carson Wentz and how Carson Wentz, the, the new quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts, he sustained a foot injury on his pra- in practice on Thursday. And so initially, at the time, it was reported that he was just going to be out indefinitely. And then Ian Rappaport of NFL.com reported a couple days ago over the weekend that it might need surgery to repair the foot. And so Carson Wentz has come out and said he's hopeful that he won't need surgery, that just rest and rehab will be all that's needed to recover. So here's the one axiom that's used frequently in sports, and especially when it comes to the NFL. If you enter a season unhealthy or injured, you are exiting that season unhealthy or injured. You don't get healthier as the season progresses in the NFL. That's, that doesn't happen. In fact, if anything, you're laboring more, you're dealing with, with more bruises, nicks and knacks, little lingering injuries that take true time to heal, but you never really have the time to recover. Rehab in the NFL is not rehabilitating Till you're healthy to play, till, till, till you're healthy. Rehabilitating in the NFL is rehabilitating till you're healthy enough to get out there on the field. And there's a big difference there. You hear all the time about players in football, especially football, such a brutal, such a gruesome and physical, demanding sport. How often. They're getting shot. They're, 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 they're getting shots before before games. They're taking they're taking Advil and di- different pills just to get themselves onto the field. And so it's never about being 100 percent healthy because they're not. It's about are you healthy enough to play? And when I saw this news, this was absolutely devastating. This was I'm ex- this, this was absolutely disconcerting. This was unnerving and deflating. Not only as as an Indianapolis Colts fan, but if you're if you're the Indianapolis Colts, this is absolutely crushing news. Regardless of whether or not he's going to come back 100% or that this is just a little blimp in the road, regardless, this is terrible news. Because th- I I was extremely extremely bullish about the Indianapolis Colts. I thought that this was a team that was going to contend with the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game. I thought they were that good that they could reach the AFC Championship game and challenge the Chiefs to a spot in the Super Bowl. I didn't think they would beat the Chiefs, but I think that they could contend with them. I had them right up with the Buffalo Bills, with the Browns, with the Ravens. All those teams, if not a little bit ahead, that's how bullish I was. You look at this entire team from top to bottom, and I don't just mean the players. I'm talking about the front office. You literally look at every single position. Jim Ursay is a great, great owner in the NFL with the Colts. Chris Ballard, fantastic, really smart GM. Frank Reich is a brilliant offensive mind. And then you look at the actual personnel. Setting aside the quarterback, they've got a top five defense, an absolutely stout defense. Darius Leonard, DeForest Buckner, they've retained. Xavier Rhodes is still there. I personally loved their draft signing Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. I thought he was perhaps the most talented defensive player in the draft this year. Certainly had perhaps the most upside and potential. Tremendous, tremendous pickup. You've got one of the best offensive lines spearheaded by Quinn and Nelson. You you sign Eric Fisher, who again, granted, coming off a ruptured Achilles, but when he does return, he will return and, and he'll be healthy and I think productive for this team. Sure, could you 
Would I prefer that they had an A-plus caliber wide receiver? Absolutely. But T.Y. Hilton is great. Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman Jr., Zach Paschal are very serviceable and talented wide receivers. Jack Dole, Doyle is, is a talented tight end. Nothing flashy, but a talented tight end. And who did Carson Wentz have the most success with? With the Philadelphia Eagles was Zach Ertz. So you know that Jack Doyle is going to get a lot of touches, a lot of production. I love their running back, Jonathan Taylor, out of my alma mater, Wisconsin. So it all came down to the quarterback. And whether or not you like Carson Wentz, and I know that it's a, it's a hot point of contention amongst a lot of NFL fans, amongst a lot of sports fans, but he's got innate skill. There is innate skill that, that exists there. He is talented and possesses certain physical traits that you can't teach or coach. He's 6'6 six, six and athletic and has a huge arm. And we've seen him have success before. We saw him have success with Frank Reich in Philadelphia in 2017 when he was the front runner to be the league MVP, led the Eagles to 11-2 and record in 13 games, 33 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, above 60% completion percentage. He was having a great year, so we know that the talent does exist within him. But then you deal this this huge step, this huge setback. And I always thought that the Colts were just one really good quarterback away from winning the whole thing. If they had Andrew Luck right now, perhaps they'd be perhaps they would be the favorites over over the Kansas City Chiefs. That's how complete of a roster and a team this is. So. I don't think people understand the one position in team sports that you can't replicate and that you can't afford to have a deficiency at is the quarterback position. They are the lifeline. They are the oxygen. They, they, they are the oxygen that allows you to breathe. They are the, the essential organs in your body. With, without it, you can't function. They literally touch the ball in every single offensive possession. Sure, the defense can play great, but you need to score. And so I, I sure hope that he doesn't need surgery. I, I I really hope that they don't that they that he doesn't need surgery because if he does and he's out indefinitely, the fact that this happened in training camp before he could even get out and play a, a preseason game, let alone a real game. It is just devastating. It is just devastating, and it's extremely daunting now. They're in a much more dire situation. It's very unsettling and, and very disconcerting if you're the Indianapolis Colts. And this was not the type of news that I was expecting or hoping to see over the weekend. Just, just terrible.